First, you want to know what to make the video about. If you're out of ideas, don't overthink it. Go to YouTube and type something you're interested in or random words into the search bar. YouTube will start suggesting things that you may or may not want to yoink for yourself. Another great method is to look at a few videos that you watched recently and just morph them together to get an idea you're happy about. There's no way my first video is gonna work, so I might as well pick something that's interesting to me. That's the best mindset to have at this point. Let's combine this video, how I accidentally became the best Mario player, with how I learned to code in four months. And we get how I accidentally learned Python. Or how I accidentally learned to code. Sounds pretty good. At this point, I stopped making this video and the video that I'm making in this video and decided to go to sleep. And I just couldn't really fall asleep. So instead of recording this from bullet points, I decided to script the first half of the video inside of Apple Notes while I was in bed, which is what I typically do before I fall asleep. Beautiful. It's time to record. There are a bunch of formats that you can choose from. Also, you can combine formats just like video ideas. I'll do screen share plus animations for this one, I think. Maybe even talking hands. I'm not sure. I haven't yet made it. There are a few things to know for recording. Audio is way more important than video. Make sure your audio sounds crisp. To do that, you can watch this video I made, or just look at me showing this video through this video and do all of the steps here. You'll sound amazing. When you're recording, don't be afraid to mess up around 500 times. We'll fix it in post. Stop. I hope you're enjoying your day, but I have to interrupt to tell you about a quick sponsor. It's the Rec Expert Screen Recorder from EaseUS that's available for Mac and Windows. It can record computer audio as well as your microphone or webcam, set it up to capture a portion of your screen or your full screen. In the settings, you can set the output quality and FPS and also trim it afterwards if you don't like how it turned out. You can use it to record meetings, tutorials, YouTube videos you know, and you'll find your output file in the movies folder. I'll leave a link to it in the description along with 100 pro licenses. Thanks to EaseUS for sponsoring this segment of the video. Once you're done, the fun part begins. Editing. I edit all of my videos in Premiere Pro, so let's learn how to use it for your first YouTube video. So once you open up Premiere for the first time, this is the kind of screen that you should see. If you don't yet have Premiere, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get it, or there are also other places where you can get it. Then I'll click New Project, and here I can choose the project name. I'll call it Shrek. Beautiful name. Let's also choose the location to be on the desktop, and Create. Wapow. By default, this is probably not the type of layout that you will see. It will probably look something like this, but you can easily resize all of these panels and drag them around so that you have the layout that you like. Beautiful. So I already went ahead and recorded my script, which I'm going to pick up from my desktop and drag straight into Premiere. And we have our audio. I'm also going to go into sequence and sequence settings. The sequence is basically what's here. It's your video. And here I can set up my video resolution. Right now it's 3840 by 2160, which is 4K. And that's beautiful. Here I can also select how many FPS I want. I'll change it to 60 FPS. Okay, so let us begin. What I typically do is come to the beginning of my sentence here and start listening if I messed up or not. I accidentally learned Python. Let me explain. The so everything on the left side is not necessary, so I'm going to click C to bring up the cut tool, cut it over here, and press delete. There was also a little space here that I want to remove, so I'm going to add both of these cuts, then switch to my move tool, which is the letter V on my keyboard, select this, and click delete to delete it. I can also select the space and delete the space to bring everything together. And now this is what we get. I accidentally learned Python. Let me explain. So I'm going to go through the whole audio clip and cut out all the silences and everything, and we're going to have clean audio at the end of it. And with that, we are finished. It took me 30 minutes. By comparison, this is what the audio track looked like before, and this is what it looks like now. So it ended up being like a third of what it was before. Next, we have just a black screen here, so we need to add a bunch of footage on top of this to make it into a video and not into an audiobook. Now this whole shebang looks quite fast on your screen, but it took me six hours. I couldn't figure out how to make it not boring, but essentially what I did was create a bunch of animations with Manim. It's a Python library. Here's one of them, for example. Learning skills don't just unlock pathways to other skills. Like learning Manim helped me learn Python, they can also help you make money. 
and then did a bunch of screen recordings to fill in empty space, as well as added text on the screen to make it more entertaining. But here's some wisdom I decided not to leave out. There's often advice that in order to keep people's attention, you need to add as many cuts, graphics, zoom-ins, captions, whatever. I don't think so. I think the best video pacing doesn't look like this. It looks more like this. It fluctuates. If it's consistent, someone will get acclimated to it and it's going to become their baseline. This is totally irrelevant if you're doing like yoga instructionals. I like how it turned out. But that's not all. We still need one of the most important parts of any video. The thumbnail. I'm thinking about a similar thumbnail that I did here for the macOS terminal video or something along the lines of having a Python logo in the center and then some blurry lines of code in the background. So I'll create a new document in Photoshop, 1280 by 720 create and import the logo. Also, I'm going to yoink the color from this thumbnail. So import it as well. Add a solid color at the bottom and then choose this color. Beautiful. Maybe I should just leave it like this. Probably not. Also, it's a good practice to zoom out the thumbnail as you're making it because most people will see it very small on their devices. And most often when you zoom out, you realize that nothing is visible and there are too many things. I like to put at most three objects in a thumbnail. Text also counts as an object. It gives me a nice limit to not overclutter things. So let's write out some Python code. Actually, I can just use some code from an animation that I've made. Screenshot this then paste it into the thumbnail. I'll convert this to a smart object so that I don't ruin it. Go to filter, blur and Gaussian blur. Then we're going to slightly blur the code. That looks pretty good, maybe a little smaller. Of course, the Python logo needs a shadow. So I'm going to double click on the right side of the layer and add a drop shadow. I think that looks good. And maybe also an outer glow. This is way too purple. It looks horrible with outer glow. So I'm just going to leave the shadow. Now I'll combine everything with command option shift E, which combines every visible layer and then outputs it to a new layer. I'll convert this to a smart object as well and go filter, camera raw filter. And now I want to add a little bit of vibrance to this thumbnail. You can see that the blue color becomes a lot more blue. And I also want a little bit of a vignette around the corners to focus in on the Python logo. Boink. I may make another thumbnail because I like making more than one, but this one doesn't look half bad. Next up, we have our video prepared and our thumbnail prepared so we can go into studio.youtube.com and then up here click create and upload video we're going to drag this one in here beautiful and the thumbnail the most important parts are the title and the thumbnail so let's focus on those first and by focus I mean leave them exactly the same because I titled the video file with the title that I wanted maybe let's change it from Python to to code because the Python logo is clearly visible in the thumbnail and a lot more people know what to code means compared to people who know what what Python is. So this potentially gives us a bigger audience that doesn't get confused by our title. Now during this video I mentioned two of my courses which I'm going to yoink from one of the previous videos descriptions. This one is about how to create animations with code and also my YouTube course. This one over here. Paste it in. Maybe let's add an emoji. On Mac you can add emojis by clicking Control command space and this type of window should open up with your emojis. Boop. Now that we have our money making links let's also optimize this description for SEO, which means that we want to include a few keywords so that it's easier for YouTube to understand what this video is about and possibly, if it's good, rank it on YouTube search results if someone searches, for example, how to learn Python. For the first sentence, I'm going to say how I learned Python or did I and learned Python is a keyword. And then down here, I'm going to put a bunch of random words that don't make any sense, but that include a bunch of keywords that are related to this video. There we go, complete nonsense. And then I'm going to scroll back, say show more and add a few more tags here. Tags are basically useless, but if you can add them, why not add them? I'm also including a few misspellings because it says here tags can be useful if content in your video is commonly misspelled. All right, that's enough with the tags. I'll go into video elements and add an end screen to one of my other videos so that if someone watches till the end and is interested in another video, they can click on it pretty easily from here. And now all that's left is to wait for it to upload. It's finished uploading, finished processing. And now all that's left is to go here and click public. Boink. 
Let's quickly give it a first like and let's see what happens after a few days. I decided to upload it on my second channel, which has a few videos with some views. The highest one is this one and 133 subscribers. So I'm interested to see how it does. And this is the whole breakdown of how long it took to make the video. Scripting took around 50 minutes, recording the voiceover, 16, editing the voiceover, 30, editing the whole video, 6 hours and 23 minutes and uploading around 18 minutes. Oh, I forgot the thumbnail, which was 15 minutes. So the total is 30,000 seconds, which is 8 hours, 34 minutes and 15 seconds to make this video. Not going to lie, I thought this was going to be way less, probably around 4 or 5 hours. After the first 5 hours, YouTube started pushing the video out to more people. But the CTR was horrendous. Only 0.3% of people clicked on the video. After seeing this, I got a little spooked and immediately remade the thumbnail so that it says oops in between the Python logo. Then I waited a little bit and... It didn't work. This video was shown to almost 10,000 people and of those 10,000, only 0.5 clicked on it. Probably means that something is wrong. At first it got shown to a bunch of people, 6,000, then more people again, 8,000, then even more and still only 0.5% of them clicked. That's why I'm changing up the thumbnail. So I remade it once again, this time to say impossible in between the Python logo. The thinking here was that it will hopefully make someone think, how did he act? accidentally learn to code with it being impossible. And this time, this happened. Oh, 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 oh. We got ourselves a fish. 43 views in the last 60 minutes. So I think this thumbnail is finally working. And the views are coming from browse features, which means the YouTube homepage, which is exactly what we want to see. Okay, it's been around 15 days and the video is currently sitting at 2.3 thousand views. Not horrible. This is when I changed the thumbnail from the original one to the current one. It's also still getting roughly the same amount of views every single day. I'm pretty happy with it because this is a channel that not many people know about and getting 2.3 thousand views is pretty good. I would have expected like 50 or 10. I'm also going to add that learning to make videos unlocked a bunch of ways to make money for me. I realized that I can make courses, for example. Any topic I learned to a reasonable degree, I could technically record myself talking about it, edit it to make it entertaining, and turn that into a course for beginners. That's what I did with my YouTube course once I learned how to edit videos, or my course about how to make animations with code. I wouldn't even have thought of making it if I didn't have the skill of making videos. Also, if you want to learn how to edit videos, and not just edit them, but be extremely fast at it. Learn all the keyboard shortcuts, all the things that you can do to make either a video where you don't show your face or a video where you show your face. I've put together a massive YouTube course that focuses heavily on editing videos in Premiere. Editing is often the hardest and most time consuming part for new content creators. So learning to do it well and also fast is going to save you a lot of headache if you plan to make videos. If you're going to make 100 videos and you save two hours of editing, because you know how to do it fast and efficiently, that's 200 hours saved. In the course, I also go through a bunch of other things, sneaky tips and tricks that helped me maximize my chances of winning the YouTube game. I'll link to it in the description if you're interested.